Healing is a better word than curing. Curing means bringing him back to original state, which is impossible in this universe. Healing is making him whole. You can heal a dying patient also and make him feel happy. When once he's happy, he dies. And as Sanatana Dharma said, the soul does not die. A latest study in Illinois showed that dead patient's consciousness is still alive for as long as they are in the hospital. Beyond that, they have not studied. And as long as the patient was in the dead body, was in the hospital, the consciousness was alive. How many have read that book, Life After Death? Uh, Raymond Moody Jr. Of course, you can always criticize that it's not done. No, it is all done properly. And all that showed was, when you have a heart stopping and brain dead, when the brain doesn't get blood supply, you still can see your consciousness telling you. One nurse told this patient, they were giving him pumping and all, she came and said, hey, leave him alone, he's dead. And she went, she was the main nurse in the theater, you know. This patient had never seen that lady before, okay. Anyway, he recovered and he was in the intensive care unit recovering very well. And this nurse is being the matron, she goes there and says, hi, how are you? Then she said, you are the lady who said this ass is dead, I'm here, alive. She, was, she collapsed. She collapsed. So, you have your consciousness, that's the energy in and around you, which is the halo around you, and this energy is what heals. And this energy, why don't you use it to heal others? You spread this message. Quantum healing is very simple, I'll tell you. Quantum healing is, you create your own thoughts, and these are quantum thoughts. And the thoughts heal you. Because, if you know, if you go a little deep into quantum physics, the Planck's quotient says, every second, every second, your matter and energy change 1044 times, which is called the Planck's constant. And just as every atom knows the blueprint of a molecule, every energy knows the blueprint of a matter. So supposing, let us say, you have a problem with your liver, let us say, you have a cancer in the liver. You just meditate and say, let my liver cancer go away. So when next time the energy, which is the quantum energy, changes into matter, it rebuilds your liver without the cancer. It doesn't happen overnight, because we all want quick fixes, you know. That's why we like Western medicine. You have a fever now, today the fever should come down. Nobody tells you fever is a good thing God has given you because you have a germ inside you. The germ to kill you requires higher temperature. On the contrary, we go and kill the fever. So instead of one day's recovery, which you would have had without the drug, you have one week's recovery and then say, oh, I'm a weakness, I can't go to the hospital and all because of the drugs. So friends, it's your thought that can change. And where does the thought generate? In the mind, not in the brain. Remember that? The lady who showed that the opiate receptors outside the brain for the first time, her name, is, her name was, she is dead, Candace Pert in the NIH. So the NIH director who got this, because she will get Nobel Prize certainly for this. So he published that in his name. So she went to the Nobel Committee with her ledger and said, this is my work, this rascal has published that. So in the bargain, he didn't get the Nobel Prize and she also didn't get the Nobel Prize. But she has written a book for you. How you can treat yourself with the man. And the book's name is Molecules of Emotion. What's the book's name? Molecules of Emotion. And the author's name? Candace, C-A-N-D-A-C-E, Pert, P-E-R-T. And there, one sentence I'll tell you in that book. The book is very good. She tells her about her problems and things like that. She says, time has come for us now not to reach to the cupboard for pills for a headache. You take a quiet place in your house, better Guruji's uh, pyramid, sit quietly for a little while, and elevate your consciousness to a level where your consciousness, your mind can heal your headache. Drugless treatment. So fascinating. And a lot of people will say, oh, what is homeopathy? I can't see any chemistry in homeopathy. I test it, there's no chemistry. There can't be chemistry because it's not meant to be chemistry. Now, Rustum Roy has found out the structure of water, which has got loose bands. You put any medicine, say a drop of Sambucus nigra into medicine, that changes the structure of medicine. And the same structure remains changed even if you dilute it one million times. And the, it's a change structure's energy that heals and not the chemical. Chemical, if you give it to the body, it destroys. Here there's no chemical, only change water. And water is alive. You know, we, we were taught in botany that water gets sucked up the tree, 
uh, by capillary action. No. Water is so alive, like a snake, it can go wherever it wants to go. Water is fascinating. So the new science of evolutionary biology has clearly taught us that the human system is a closed system. E vis -a -vis, the Western science which says human system is an open system. What is the difference between the two? Simple difference is, in the olden days, you wanted hot water in Bangalore for a bath, you had to take a bucket of water and put your heater inside that. When the water is hot, you would remove the heater yourself, which means for the water to be heat or cold, you require an outside agency, a doctor, to do that. Today, we have come to a geyser. You switch on and go away. The water heats on its own. When the water is hot, the, the adapter will push it off. And when the water becomes cold, it becomes warm again. So human system is like that. It has got an inbuilt doctor. The most qualified doctor, he is above PhD. His name is the immune system. And we have to guard our immune system very, very carefully. That is the essence of Ayurveda, which says, Swasthasya, Swastha, Rakshitam. Preserve the wellness of the healthy. And to do that, Ayurveda has elaborate systems of Panchakarma. And when your immune system is guarded, you can't get any disease, including cancer. So friends, though it is very easy to say, it is difficult to do. You have to do certain things because you must have an environment in your body which is conducive for health. Now, for example, we eat so many things. Like, you know, we are carnivores, except eating man. Of course, we eat man every day. But uh, except eating man in physical sense, we eat all animals. So this makes your body's environment acidic. Acid environment, cells cannot survive. So the cells mutate and become cancer. You just have to make it alkaline. Very simple. You can drink alkaline water. God has given you a fantastic alkaline water. That's called tender coconut water. Now today in America, every house has cartons of tender coconut water. Not Coca-Cola and uh, Pepsi and all. Tender coconut water. Tender coconut water is such a fascinating alkaline uh, liquid that if you have one day, every day a tender coconut water, cancer will find it very difficult to come in. Supposing you can't get tender coconut water, let us say you are not in the tropics. Somebody will say, I'm from Timbuktu in Canada or I'm in Quebec or somewhere. You still can do that. You get a lime piece, put it in your drinking water, pieces of lime, cut it, and then drink that water next day. Preferably, keep it in either silver, gold, or bronze, or copper vessel. I tell you, it becomes so healthy. So friends, preserving health is more profitable than treating diseases. Diseased population in this world is only 5% on a given day. 95% of the people are healthy. So it's more profitable to look after these healthy people by trying to preserve their health, as Ayurveda says, than otherwise. So the future is for quantum thinking. But healing is not done by quantum energy. Healing is done by spiritual energy, which is much higher than quantum energy. And there are no quanta in the spiritual level. The spiritual energy comes from our spiritual beliefs. Spirituality is not religion. If I bend it down for a practical level, do you know what spirituality? Sharing and caring. If you share and care, you become a spiritual person. And when you share and care, you become a healthy person. There's a beautiful saying in Massachusetts General Hospital. There was a man called Peabody, Francis Peabody, who was the director of the Mass General Hospital in 1927, he tried. He gave a motto, which they have written there. Patient care is caring for the patient. Did you understand that? Patient care is caring for the patient. That's the motto of the Mass General Hospital. You go there, it's written on the wall. Patient care is caring for the patient. Caring. That's what D.H. Lawrence wrote. Our progress in this world is trouble, but care, care. And care for others you will be a healthy person. Scare others, you will be an unhealthy person. Hate others, you will get autoimmune disease. Now let me once again thank Guruji, the organizers, and all of you for a patient hearing. I know what you will say when you go home. Why did they call that foolish fellow? He was talking something I didn't understand. You know, I, I was a friend of mine who used to go from place to place lecturing. He was a parish priest, but a Protestant one, not a, not a Catholic one. So one day he was in he was Sunday it was and he was in Bangalore and he was staying in a hotel and he wanted to write a letter to his wife because those days there were no email and all.
So he wrote a letter, wanted to post it. So he came out to the hotel, being Sunday, he didn't know where the post office is. But there are a couple of urchins playing on the roadside. So he told the kids, can you show me the post office? Come on, sir, it's a holiday for us. Come on, we'll help you. They took him to the post office and he posted the card. And coming back, he thought, I'm a priest. These children have helped me. I must do something. So he went to the shop and said, give me some chocolates to give to the kids. And when he put his hand inside, the wallet was in the hotel. So he told the kids, sorry, I don't have money to buy you. But this evening, I'm giving a lecture in the pyramid of Guruji. It costs you 100 rupees to enter. But I'll give you some ticket. You show it to the entry people there and say that this man is talking, so we will come and attend free. So this is my present for you. Children know. Children are curious, not like us, because we were stopped thinking at school. Did you know that? A Nobel laureate, Alexis Carroll, wrote in his book, Man the Unknown, every newborn child is a genius. 100% true. Only to be converted into an idiot in school. <laughs> Do you think it's not right? It's right, ma. Because in school, you are taught deterministic predictability model of Newton. What is that? 2 plus 2 is 4. Now, if young lady there, what is that called? Uncertainty principle. 1925, this young man was a student in the Zurich Polytechnic class. And who was teaching him? Albert Einstein, Nobel laureate. Mm. And what was he teaching? E is equal to mc squared. So this boy gets up in the class and says, you're talking through your hat, sir. This is not true. This is all determining Newtonian physics. It's not true. What happens to a student who tells a Nobel laureate teacher that he is foolish? He becomes an outstanding student. <laughs> so you're standing outside physics for 30 years, and he gets his Nobel Prize in 1956 for what he said in 1925. What did he say? Uncertainty principle. QP is not equivalent to PQ, which means 3 into 2 may be 6, but 2 into 3 need not be 6. This is not taught in the school. See, that's why Alexis Carroll said, every newborn child is a genius to be converted an idiot in school. Tagore, Ragu, Guruji Tagore did not want to school, go to school. His father encouraged him. And he didn't go to school. He didn't learn English. But Tagore gets the Nobel Prize in 1913 for the English Gita Anjali he wrote in 1911. Somebody asked him, where did you study English? Ekalavya? For studying English, you have to go to uh, Cambridge, is it? No, I taught English for myself. Great brain. So friends, I want all of you to T-H-I-N-K. Think, think, think. One young man spoiled science for this world. His name is René Descartes, who said, Cogito ergo sim. I think, therefore I am. No. I am and there. He said, reversed it. Because you are here and you have a consciousness, you can think. And if you did that, whole science of the West looks like child's play. And this new science of holism, holism, look at everything as a whole, and that is the future of science. Now, anyway, what happened to these children? They asked a question. Sir, sir, what are you talking about? Then the priest became very serious. Me, I'm a priest, talking about, I'm talking about way to heaven, God, and esoteric thing. Children burst out laughing loudly. Then the man said, sir, why are you, why are you laughing? No, sir. A man who doesn't know the post office way, how does he know way to heaven? Thank you very much. Nobody wants this to end, but then, you know. Lift a policeman requires a lot of energy. <laughs>
Now they say what he has been telling last 40 years is true. 40 years he has been saying that. And now says, you know, this goes un unreported. You know, normally if it had been anywhere else, they would have praised him. Anyhow, it's, uh, it's so just a dear friend of mine, I can't praise him more than that. But, you know, wherever he goes, at every talk of his, is, I heard him a number of times, but it's always enjoyable and enlightening. And also a man of great courage, knowledge, more than that, I admire his courage to speak what he says, which is also, and also meditation and spiritual practices, and ultimately, as he says, his love, caring for each other, is the recipe for our own health and health of the universe also. So you have got the right man to speak about meditation and also about uh, healing. I thank you, sir. Only one thing, don't eat garlic. He needs a third eye to know and understand many, many more things, which comes from meditation. Third eye gives you knowledge of all the other dimensions, all your past lives, past karma. Meditation gives you third eye. Third eye, you see the truth. Without third eye, you don't see the truth. <laughs>